You know, I love the sleek look and the quiet operation of an AIO, but I am an absolute sucker for a chunky CPU air cooler. So when I saw the Vtrue U6 available on Amazon for less than $50, I had to reach out to Vtrue and see if they would let me do a product review for it. And luckily they said yes, which is why we're doing this video here. Now Vitru agreed to send me the cooler and I appreciate that, but no other money is exchanged hands here. So this will be an honest review and opinion of what I think of this cooler. So today we'll do an unboxing. I'll guide you through the install process and then we'll take a look at some of the performance of this cooler compared to an AIO and in particular the Vitru V360, which is what I currently have on my gaming PC. And after that, I'll give you my thoughts and opinions on it and we'll have Amazon affiliate links for the coolers down below. Let's get going. Unboxing the Vitra U6 is pretty standard. First off up top, you've got the instruction manual, followed by a box of hardware that you'll use to install the cooler into your system. From there underneath the foam padding, you'll see the cooler and the fans itself. Now this cooler does come with ARGB, which you can also daisy chain and everything is already connected out of the box, as well as PWM to control the fan speeds. Fans themselves spin pretty freely and overall looks like a good cooler. And also don't forget to peel the sticker on the bottom, otherwise your thermals are going to suck. Moving on to the hardware, you'll see that you've got everything you need, including thermal paste, the bracket, and all the screws to install the cooler onto your system. Okay, now that we got the cooler unboxed, what I need to do is go ahead and uninstall the 360 millimeter AIO and get this one installed so we can see how it performs. All right, so I had an epiphany during the uh, epip, epiphany, epiphany during the uninstall of the V360 uh, 360 millimeter AIO from Vitru here, which is, it of course has three fans on it because it's 360 millimeter rad. Um, I've got three fans in the front, which actually bring air into the system. And what I wanted to actually do is, since there's only two fans on the CPU cooler itself, I didn't want all that just sitting in there. So I am gonna put in 120 millimeter exhaust and that would, I won't say mimic because there was three just kind of pulling cool air over the radiator and exhausting out the case. Um, but at least this way, as the cool air comes in, gets pulled across the cooler, it'll have an exhaust vent. And I think that's probably fair to the U6 uh, when we start looking at temperatures compared to the V360. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do the installation of that now. And then also, like I said, I'll put in the 120 millimeter cooler and I think we'll be ready to do some performance testing afterwards. So uh, yeah, back to work. For the installation, take the bracket with the appropriate manufacturer facing you and insert the screws into the proper hole for the socket you are installing it for. Future Joe here, and I forgot one of the pieces on the instruction installation here, so I just want to get to this real quick and insert it. Uh, so we went over basically putting the bracket in, put the screw in, but there's one more piece which I did when I did the installation, but I forgot to record at that point. And that is this uh, little piece right here, which is the smaller washer. That actually goes over the top of the screw, and that's what holds it in. And then you stick your uh, bracket here into the motherboard, and then you would put the spacer on top uh, with the motherboard in between. So basically, just make sure you put this washer on to hold everything in place and align everything, and then continue with the instructions here, just like we're going to. From there, you're gonna to wanna to slide this into the motherboard from the underneath and then attach a spacer onto each screw to hold it on. And don't worry, we're gonna clean up that thermal paste real soon. 
From there, attach the bracket onto the spacers and then cinch it down with the nuts that are provided. Once again, do this for all four of your screws. Once all the screws are attached, go ahead and tighten it down just slightly with the provided wrench. And remember, don't over tighten. You don't have to have it that tight, otherwise you could damage your mother. All right, from there, we're gonna apply some fresh thermal paste. I'm using the X pattern, but do what you want to. I'm not gonna judge you, the internet will. Now that your thermal paste is applied, go ahead and attach the heat sink onto the bracket and then screw it down using a crisscross pattern, uh, just basically alternating between the two bolts uh, or the two screws uh, to attach it and cinch it down firmly to the bracket itself. Now that's complete, grab your fan brackets, attach them to the fans, and then attach that to the heatsink. Then all that's left to do is stuff in all the cables and attach the PWM and ARGB fan cables to the appropriate headers on your motherboard. Alright, jumping right into the performance here, uh, running Prime95 for 30 minutes, we saw that the VTrue AIO actually had an average temperature of 71 degrees while the Vitro U6 ran at 69 degrees uh, for that same 30 minute run. And we'll get into a little bit more detail about that uh, after the rest of the performance benchmarks here. During a 30 minute run of Cinebench, we saw the 360 millimeter AIO get up to 72 degrees on average, while the U6 was at 78 degrees on average. And the AIO had a score of 15,719, while the U6 had an average score of uh, 14,962. Uh, once again, we'll talk a little bit more about the scores and temperatures as we move along. And moving into gaming, uh, for a one hour session, the AIO had an average temperature of 50 degrees, while the U6 for the same one hour uh, period uh, ended up with a temperature of 53 degrees Celsius. All right, so let's talk about these performance numbers. So the performance on these were actually very hard to get. And the reason for that is I am using a Z490 motherboard from MSI. Now, if you have not seen Gamers Nexus uh, cover Z490 motherboards and the wattage, please make sure to go check out that video. I'll put a link in the description down below. But the TLDW is basically is that these Z490 boards will crank in as much power as they can to make your processor seem like they are better than what they are or you know, kind of better than what they should be. Uh, that being said, it was very hard on this MSI board in particular to actually standardize the voltage because it wants to use these presets. And no matter what I did, I could not get the presets to go away. So unless it was using something like the uh, AIO preset or the box cooler preset, I should say, um, it just the Z490 motherboard tried to pump way too much voltage than this cooler can handle. And it was actually so bad in the beginning, I thought I either installed the cooler wrong or that the cooler was garbage. So just keep that in mind. Once I was able to actually get the power under control, it actually did very well. And so under gaming, it was actually running at five gigahertz on all cores, which was great. Um, but during the other stress tests, it was more around 4.6. So that prolonged period of time of just constant pressure, uh, it did drop the voltage down a little bit. Once again, I don't think this is the cooler's fault. Um, it was just me trying to get the standardization for the power. Um, with the AIO, the, my motherboard just cranks as much power into it and the AIO can handle it because it's got all the liquid and it can dissipate all that good stuff, which is why you might consider an AIO. Uh, but I think the cooler did very well, all things considered. All right, so if you do have a high powered CPU, like a 10850K, 9900K, something like that, I would actually recommend this particular cooler because I think it does a good job on those high powered chips. However, if you have something like maybe a 10400 or a 3600 or something like that, uh, maybe consider using the Vitru V5 cooler. I've done a review right here that you can go watch. And for a 65 watt TDP chip, I think this is actually the better option for you. It's about $20 cheaper and does an absolute fantastic job. So that's it for today. Like, subscribe, join the Discord, all that stuff for YouTube. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.